Team Trimble. Uh, we are, I'm not sure who all is on the call, but we are obviously a team operating out of Lake Country. And um, we've been in business for about uh, six years now. So um, Diana, actually, I think there was someone else that was slated to uh, do this training or presentation, I should say, and they kind of canceled at the last minute. So I'm popping in here to um, help out and show you a little bit, you know, what we do. So um, forgive me if I make any mistakes. And there's a few things that I don't actually have with me because uh, I actually live in Ohio and I support uh, Team Trimble mainly virtually. And I come to Wisconsin like every four to six weeks um, to meet face to face with the team. And uh, I'm not currently a licensed agent in Wisconsin. I am licensed in Ohio, um, but I am actually soon to be getting my uh, license in Wisconsin. So I will be able to um, start selling, but I do pretty much everything else that the team needs that doesn't involve contracts and selling. So to stay within the license. So my background is in um, corporate marketing and sales and did that for almost 30 years before I joined Team Trimble. And uh, when we decided, Karen was an individual agent and decided to create a team. And uh, like I said, we've been in operation for, I think it's five years now. Karen's got like six years as an individual agent in total. So before that. Um, so uh, I'm gonna share some tools with you and I don't know the, um, I guess the level of experience with the people who are on the call. So please, I mean, I know everyone is muted right now, but um, I'd love feedback, whether that's by chat or if you wanna, can they unmute themselves, Julia? Okay. Yep, so they'll be able to, and we can also do questions at the end. Okay. That worked, okay. You know, and along the way. And along the way. That's fine. So, um, you know, I, I am going to share some tools with you um, that we use uh, as a part of our presentations and kind of talk to you about how we prepare our packets for the presentation so they were kind of always ready to go. Um, but there were a couple of things that I thought that I would share with you. Um, Kind of like what I'll call our mindset or guiding principles that are kind of above and beyond that because I think you know, a lot of times um, agents will say things like well I can't do this because I don't have these materials yet you know and that kind of thing and so it's kind of a limiting belief that you need to have everything all 100% in order in order to be able to go out and start selling and it actually is a fallacy so um, when karen started she started back um, when the north shore market center was just being launched and she was meeting with maureen stale at maureen's kitchen table at her home and it wasn't even an official market center yet uh, Karen had been pretty much a stay-at-home mom, but was uh, very involved in the community and was the president of her school board for about nine years, so was very civic-minded as well, and decided to start um, a career in real estate. And she really didn't have, um, when she was first out of, college, out of school, I think she did some uh, customer service work in the insurance industry, so she did have some business experience, but it had been a long time since she had really been back in the business world. And we do consider what we do, you know, our business, and it is definitely a career we do it full time. But she did it with really a big gap from when she got started, you know, from when she was in her career to staying home as a mom and doing civic minded things and then getting into a real estate career. And Keller Williams, I mean, Maureen was just launching Keller Williams in Milwaukee. So it was a complete unknown entity. Um, there was a lot of um, things that weren't at the ready and Karen was also um, operating, really her sphere was in Lake Country, but she was coming to the North Shore to be trained and to learn. So uh, she had very little at her disposal and just went with kind of who she was authentically and uh, was able to do a lot of things without a lot of the tools that we have that are kind of at our fingertips now, even with um, command and all that Keller Williams offers. So uh, I just wanted to say that, like, don't be, if you don't let fear hold you back from um, getting out and working the business and don't let being a perfectionist also stop you from going out and 
um, meeting people and networking and you know going to presentations so um, so some of the guiding principles that I have that I just thought would were important to share um, because I do think that this is something that uh, we as a team kind of adhere to so it's kind of above and beyond the tools is um, the first thing is to, you know to be a learner you know um, learn from as many people as you can um, so obviously you're here on this call so that's a start you know that you're willing to do this um, look at all the different examples that are provided to us on a regular basis through our market center through our you know weekly team meetings as well as through command and through um, all that Keller Williams has to offer uh, through you know the online learning and the webinars and what happens so um, my father always taught us that um, you know you're only smart when you realize that there's always a lot more to know so I think if you look at the most successful agents not only in our region in Keller Williams but also I think across the country um, all of them are always learning learning from each other um, and you know obviously even sometimes you know we are competing with each other against you know against each other to get business but it's a big ocean and there's a lot of fish in that ocean and there's no way that one individual and agent can take all that business so uh, the spirit of camaraderie and helping to build each other up is definitely something that we aspire to and you know you know Karen and Maureen regularly talk and Janine Warner I mean all the top agents that are out there I mean they really still continue to share and learn from each other so um, that was the first thing. Um, the second was, you know, you'll learn from a lot of different people. You'll see a lot of different presentations, a lot of protocols, a lot of processes, um, and a lot of different kinds of personalities. And um, my advice is to be authentic. Um, learn from as many as people as you can, be a sponge, um, but it's really important to play to your natural strengths and to try to force yourself to be someone else. You know, you're uniquely made, um, so play to that strength, take what you learn, maybe bits and pieces from different presentations and different approaches and see what feels right for you and uh, go with that and don't try to become someone that you're not because I, I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why um, Karen and our team are as successful are, as they are is because um, there's an authenticity that comes through. Um, when she's meeting with people and also when you're authentic I mean it's much more easy to be passionate about the people that you meet and then the work that you're doing um, and the other thing is you know um, try to be at ease um, in your business and when you're um, meeting with people even though it can be unnerving especially when you know you're up against other agents trying to win business I think the most important thing is to try to be at ease and be tastefully confident, you know, and I use the word tastefully because I think it's important to have a presence and to have a level of confidence that is visible to the people that you're presenting to or talking with, but also obviously we don't want to be overly confident and we don't want to be boastful. Um, we want to kind of let the way that you are um, meeting with them and the way that you're talking with them and uh, the way that you're conveying information kind of speak for itself and um, obviously you do you know you do talk about your numbers and your production and those kinds of things but it shouldn't be it's not really uh, shouldn't be the the lion's share of what you're doing um, and presenting to the people um, the other thing is just you know to be relatable uh, I would say that you know Karen and our, the agents on our team would say that one of the most important things is to kind of have your awareness up when you're uh, walking into a presentation, you know, take an inventory, you know, take a quick inventory of what you see, um, body language, you know, how the people are speaking with you um, and try to, you know, make a good impression, but also like look beyond just you know, the fact that they're having you in their home to try to sell their home and try to make a connection. That's actually completely outside of your purpose of being there. Because a lot of times that's really what's gonna make you memorable. If you do a good job and you are credible and they feel like that what you've presented to them makes sense, um, if you've done something additional like making a connection, uh, a lot of times that's really what sticks with them more than anything else because like we know there's hundreds of agents that they can choose from. Everyone's going to come with a price and everyone's going to say that they're going to sell their home. But how can you make those connections? How can you stand out outside of that? 
Um, the other thing is to, you know, you hear this in most of the presentations, but, you know, ask questions um, and you should be listening more than you're talking and that you should start to see repetitive um, uh, things that are coming up. So if there's like terminology or things that they, that keeps coming up, depending on the questions that you're asking, just, you know, make note of that and try to, um, you know, they use the term mirroring. So you kind of want to mirror um, the people that you're presenting to. So if you're talking to a type A personality, you know, if you're really um, a conversationalist and you're used to doing all those kinds of things, you know, try to, you know, uh, temper your presentation so it really is being received in the manner in which the people on the other end like to be told information. So um, I think that uh, the best way to do that is to be prepared. <laughs> is to know the inventory. Um, and I will say probably more than anything else that especially, you know, with COVID and, you know, the different things that have been happening with, um, well, not so much anymore, but the reduced ability to get into homes and see them. Um, if you've got time on your hand, uh, the most important thing that you can be doing is um, becoming knowledge of the inventory that's in the marketplace, um, the neighborhoods that are in your farm, and um, you know, know the stats from the MLS. Um, you know, the MLS and those kinds of things are obviously, um, you know, if you look at the hot sheets and if you're looking at price ranges and you're just looking at attributes of a home to uh, know the inventory, that's just kind of one level of intimacy with market knowledge. So you cannot replace what you know for yourself in the marketplace by being there, by getting in homes as, you know, I'm not sure where we are right now with being, being able to do previews and that kinds of things, but you know, driving by homes, looking at the photos, getting a sense of neighborhoods, looking at historical data so that it becomes something that can just flow off your lips and it's not something that you really have to reference all the time. I mean, obviously like Charlie's been telling us, you know, data is really important because in the absence of data, you know, people make their own decision or whatever they think to be true is true because there's nothing that you have to back it up. So that's definitely true, but um, it's like everything. If you can take uh, data that's out there like from the MLS and then you marry that or balance that with your own personal information that you have that is really undispu indisputable, that is your best um, artillery to use um, in making people feel at ease, making you um, be perceived as the expert in the marketplace and being able to just talk about the data in conversation versus having to reference charts. So um, that's another thing that I think is really important. Um, the other thing that I, I know that it looks like there's about 20 people here. Um, I'm not sure how many people here are actually just individual agents or are agents on a team. Um, I will say that um, one of the things that I love about Keller Williams is, you know, the support that we provide each other, the information and the sharing. And if there's someone that you can um, kind of partner up with in the market center to do what I call team selling, I don't think there's anything that can beat team selling. And when I say that, I mean, if there's someone that you trust that you feel like maybe isn't exactly like you, but compliments who you are and you guys are willing to, um, uh, go on listing appointments. Like, so in some cases, you know, you have to take a back seat to another agent and it's their listing appointment and you're there to support them. And then it can happen vice versa. Because I do think there are so many things that happen, you know, when you're presenting or in a room with people, nuances that people pick up on that other people don't. And I call it the difference between like color commentary and play by play from a sports analogy. So, uh, you know, if, let's just say Karen and I were working together and we were um, at a presentation and she was doing a lot of the talking, but then I start to notice that maybe one of, you know, the wife or someone is um, kind of taking notes and um, maybe uh, looked away a little bit or different things like that. I can say, no, you know, Judy, do you have any questions about what Karen's saying? You know, can we offer any more information? Just picking up on those nuances, I think, is important. So if it's possible, I do recommend doing that. And you don't have to be on an official team to be able to do that. I think that's, you know, again, to leverage what Keller Williams, the culture of Keller Williams um, is, le you know, leveraging that. Um, 
the other thing is that, I mean, I've called it a presentation a few times, but um, obviously when you go to sit down with people, it's a meeting and uh, it's kind of like where you're, you're sharing information. You know, you're providing basically background information that can be used as a toolkit of what you would be using as a toolkit to help them get their home sold. Um, but at the end of the day, people don't like to be talked to or at, they like to feel like they're part of the conversation. So just being mindful of that um, too. You know, we have these tools, but I think the tools should just be used as a guide. And the more presentations you do, the more comfortable you become at having them to be a resource and not a crutch. So, I mean, I'm sure that there are, but you know, you can do your scripts and your practicing in advance as, me as much as possible. And really the only way to get better at that is by doing it more. And if you're not going on a lot of listing presentations, presentations, you could be asking agents to go along with them, you know, an agent that you admire in the market center, or like I said, you could ask to, you know, other agents in your office to help to work as a team with you on a listing appointment. Um, the other thing is, um, I think that it, I, I like in real estate because it happens, you know, people buy and sell so infrequently and actually even the data, the NAR data that uh, Charlie shared the other day is that people are moving less. I mean, they already weren't moving a ton, but now they're moving a little bit less. So I like in um, real, buying and selling real estate kind of like, uh, you know, buying like an engagement ring or, um, I don't know, buying like a boat or something, you know, like something that really is only kind of a once in a lifetime purchase where you understand like with a diamond, the color cut and clarity, all those things that you learn about a diamond and then hopefully you're only giving it to a person one time, right? So, and then you forget all about it after a while. So um, if we start to take what we do for granted or we don't share with people what the value is in what we do, then what they're going to think is what you're doing is putting on their home on the market to sell. And I will say, I mean, after, you know, being in corporate industry, in the corporate world for almost, you know, 30 years and then turning to a real estate career. I mean, I bought and sold lots of houses. I actually built three. Um, so I think in the last 15 years, I've moved seven times. And I will tell you that before I became an agent and be before I became a business operations manager in this business, I really didn't know all the things that were going on behind the scenes and how much opportunity there was for things to kind of uh, go off the rails, if you will, and how much my agent really was working for me on my behalf um, behind the scenes or what have you. So maybe she wasn't, you know, sharing enough, you know, information. She was maybe giving me reports, but she wasn't really kind of sharing what the value is of what she was bringing to the table. Um, so I think that's really important because if you don't tell them what the value is, then they don't understand and they really limit kind of what you're doing. And there's a whole heck of a lot of things that we do that's above and beyond, um, obviously just listing a home for sale and bringing it to close. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, to uh, communicate with your uh, clients or with the people that you're presenting to. Um, I always say, and Karen always says, you know, pick up the phone. You know, you go in, you uh, are given an opportunity to share who you are uh, with a potential seller and, uh, you know, follow up. I mean, don't take it for granted. Don't wait for them to return the call. I mean, it's like everything, you know, you want to show them persistence and that you're willing to, that their business is important to you. So, you know, follow up with a phone call and, you know, of course, send a personal note. So um, I think those things are really important. Um, the other thing is if, again, if you're a new agent and you don't have a lot of your own data, um, production information that you can share, use the market center data, leverage that data and all of Keller Williams, because obviously we're on a really nice trajectory right now and you can talk about that. And I would refer to, you know, other agents in your market center as your colleagues. You know, it's like, you know, my colleagues. You know, so wherever you can, you know, promote a sense of team, even if you're an individual agent, um, and also leverage as much as you can, you know, the market center data that um, is out there. Um, the other thing is, and this is going to be kind of a funny one, but, you know, if you don't win the listing, oh my gosh, that actually happens sometimes. I mean, you know, you walk in, you think that you got it, and then gasp, it goes to someone else. So, um, I mean, maybe you can lick your wounds a little bit. 
you know, behind the scenes and cry a few tears and, you know, pull off your big girl panties and march on. But um, the most important thing I think to do if you don't win the listing is to reach out to that seller and um, whether it's when you find some sellers won't, sometimes they won't even tell you. So they won't, don't tell you that you didn't get it and all of a sudden it appears in the MLS and you see someone else got it. So in those situations, you know, what I would recommend that you do is either you call, text or email that seller and just say, hey, I saw that your listing just came to market. I'm excited for you. Um, I hope that you can get your home sold. I'm already thinking about buyers that um, would be interested in your home. And I've shared it with those buyers as well as other people in my office and other agents. I would love to help you get your home sold, even though I'm not your um, listing agent. I think it goes a long way towards your credibility. You also never know how um, you know, those kind of situations will go down. They have a contract with a listing agent. If you act professionally and if you act with grace and you act um, with as someone that they're like, wow, that was awfully nice of them to do that. And, you know, they're still going to help me sell my home. I mean, of course, that's really what we're here to do. And plus, we also have to work together as co-op agents. So, I mean, if it's a listing that I wanted, it's a, it, that means it's a listing I want to bring buyers to. So it really doesn't matter which side of that you're on. Um, you always want to move forward with grace and to congratulate them and to let them know that you're going to try to bring a buyer. And hey, you might. And so then you get to see on the other side, hey, listen, I know I didn't win the listing, but I did bring a buyer. What I said was true. I'm going to help you sell your home. So I think that's really important. Um, and then lastly is just kind of a, like a get ready thing, which uh, I, you know, sometimes listing uh, request appointments come up kind of out of nowhere. And I'm just always like, be at the ready as best you can, you know, have your packets ready to go, um, put the things, put your um, documents like on a Google Drive so that they're easy to update um, on the fly. But, you know, have kind of the guts of your listing presentations ready to go so you can turn on a moment's notice and be available. Uh, you don't want to take too much time. You want to be responsive. You want to do your homework, but you also want to be responsive. So I think it's important to have that ready to go whether and we've got just like a file folder that's just filled with all of our packets that are ready to go and um, we just drop in our CMAs when those are done so I think that's important okay so um, does anyone have any questions I guess I should stop you are doing great oh. yeah. You know, I'm the one Asian that knocked the door the other day and asked you some questions about Lake House and was very helpful. So thank you. Yeah, well, I know you're so sweet. Well, exactly. <laughs> it's just, but well, you've been doing this for a long time too, Lizzie. I mean, you know, right? What I, a lot of what I just said is true, right? You, the tools, the kits, you know, the presentation is really just a tool. It's not going to be, I mean, it's important to have it to be professional and credible and all of those things, but you know, you should also be able to, to win the business without it. Yeah, and help with your confidence. So I think when you're prepared and you have material, because that is what is going to make a difference when you go out there <laughs> and sit with the clients, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay, well, good. Well, so then what I thought I would do next is um, I'm just going to kind of run through some of the documents that I have. And again, uh, these are not out of command. Um, these are things that we had already kind of that we were using as a part of our um, tools. It isn't to say that I'm not, there are some things that I'm actually doing in command, like landing pages and designs and direct mailers. So I am doing some of those things in command for sure. But our, um, a lot of our listing information was actually, we created from scratch and or used like Canva for and just other things. So what you're gonna see here is completely customized to Team Trimble. I'm not sure how useful that's gonna to be to everyone, um, except for the fact that it just really, um, I can, I guess, exemplifies the fact that I really believe it's important to be authentic and to whatever your brand is, however you wanna be perceived, it's important for everything to work in concert um, together. So uh, this was created because this is kind of, you know, who we are as a brand and as a team. So uh, let's see, I'll put, be better if I probably do this. Sorry. 
So we basically have like a blue folder or a green, I can't remember what color, blue or white folder. And um, just for uh, expenses, I guess when we started doing it, and we've actually just never even changed from it, we just bought uh, stock folders, you know, nice stock folders. And then we bought like, you know, the label, the Avery labels that you can buy and print on. So we did those and we have pre-printed labels with our logo on and it just says listing packet. And we literally just put those labels on the folders. And so again, if you're thinking, you know, especially with folders and things that where there's minimums and you're like, I don't really have all that money to spend. I don't know how many listing presentations I'm going to go on. I mean, so what we did was just bought stock folders at like Staples and printed labels and just put them on there. So that, the uh, folder houses everything that I'm going to show you here. So um, this is our listing presentation and we always start out with, um, you know, meeting the team. Uh, we do try to go as a team as much as possible, at least two of us, if it's possible. And we also will bring uh, depending on where we are, like, is this a no, is this someone that we know, or is it someone that is completely unknown? So depending on um, what that looks like will be how we, you know, will determine how we're going to show up at this presentation. But for, for these purposes, this is like a basic presentation. I've got like a, I didn't even bring it down here with me, but I've got like a, a probably a 56 page listing presentation um, when we are working, you know, high end luxury properties where we have been tasked with you know, kind of have everything, everything all rolled up when we go in to present. Um, this isn't that. This is just kind of your basic list, listing presentation that we can fine tune, add pages, make adjustments as we go. And I would say, I would think that this is what the type of thing that most people would want anyway. So we always start with, again, um, you know, talking about our team, you know, that this is Team Trimble. You know, we have a multidisciplined approach and we work collaboratively for um, the success of our client. Uh, and again, this is our team. So, um, you know, we have our agents, uh, we have business operations, which is me, and also contract to close, which is me, and marketing um, strategy implementation, which is me. Um, but then we also have partners, affiliated partners that we work with, you know, staging and design, photography, and, um, video and then what was my other oh sorry oops and then um i can't even i'm sorry i gotta move you guys i can't see what my other one is okay oh yeah and then our preferred partners so our other people so a lot of times if people are moving and they need help with um decluttering or they need help with organization or uh, uh like an estate sale you know, or there's things that they're going to have to get taken care of because we're going to say, listen, you're going to have to um, get the carpets cleaned or you're going to have to get the house cleaned or the windows cleaned. So we have kind of a list of preferred partners that we work with. And I think that it's not for an individual agent. I don't think it's disingenuous, disingenuous to say that you work with a team of people um, that I think that that is, that's fine. I mean, we work, um, our team works, you know, we are a physical team, but we also pull in people. And I think it's important to say that because I, I, I think there is strength in numbers and strength in um, areas of expertise. So the things that I do, for example, on marketing strategy and implementation, and also in operations management, those were things that I learned, you know, through all my years in business that I, when I came in, joined the team I applied to the team and you know the benefit is that the agents really just have to go out and work on their you know pipeline and selling and I kind of take care and obviously the negotiating all of that but I take care of kind of all the behind the scenes stuff so I think it's um, you could think about how you could apply this to your business you know what does that look like and now what happened sorry oh, there okay so then we, our next page is where we just talk a little bit about, um, you know, who we are. We are, you know, um, in Lake Country, uh, well, obviously in all of Milwaukee, but in Lake Country in particular, you know, uh, we were one of the first um, agents to incubate in Lake Country. Karen was working out of the North Shore office for a couple of years and kind of driving back and forth. And we uh, created a, um, a team office over at the Heartland Station, where we uh, were the first team to be incubating to get to a certain percentage of agents, where then the Market Center could become 
you know, an official market center. Um, and back then, I mean, there was a lot of, um, you know, uh, legacy agents, it's probably a good way to put that, you know, people had been selling real estate for a really, really long time, some gener generationally. And so um, there was a couple of things. It's like, A, who is Keller Williams? Keller who? And then it was like, you know, um, and who are, who's Team Trimble? And so, uh, because we were only, we're only about six years old. So we uh, have this page really to talk about that kind of Keller Williams as, as a whole, the things that we, that Keller Williams has going on. And then for our team in particular, to be able to show credentialing if we're up against other agents who have been doing it for a lot longer. Um, so, and I'm not going to go through all of these, but we've got our KWO awards. Um, we've, you know, kind of a local expert, you know, what our ranking is in MLS, how, you know, we're community minded, the things that we do in um, the community that are important to us and that are kind of part of our guiding principles. Um, you know, the network that we have by being um, members of Lake Country for, I think, over 30 years, um, almost all of our agents have been, you know, lived in Lake Country for 30 years and our little tagline is love and live in Lake Country. And so, you know, real estate kind of is the byproduct of our love for Lake Country. Uh, and so it's really important for us to talk about that network and how we are so well connected. Um, and then the last thing is we just have there is just kind of this, you know, out of the box thinking, you know, uh, and I think Keller Williams also helps to uh, feed some of that for us where we say things like you know we're not just doing um, real estate conventionally the way that it's been done for the last whatever 50 years you know we are looking at things differently we're leveraging insight and knowledge and data to help uh, drive sales and to help you get your home sold and then we do it in a very integrated and multi-disciplined approach and then here's just kind of again you guys can take this, you know, look at this and how would you take something like this and how would it apply to your business? But, you know, like I said, you know, it's like our truth. We really feel um, that it's important to express, you know, you know, who we are individually and collectively as a team. And, you know, we are, you know, right now we're five women who love and live in Lake Country. We've lived here for a really long time. We are, um, have been active members of our community for a long time and we're passionate about real estate. Um, we're well connected and professionally and personally and we feel like that is kind of how sometimes the magic happens outside of just showing people homes and helping to write contracts. So um, this just talks a little bit about what our truth is. So I would challenge any of you to say, okay, well, what is your truth? What is your vision? You know, what is your mission? What are your guiding principles? What are your values? And, um, you know, go through some of those exercises that Keller Williams has to kind of create your talking points about you know who you are, what are your tenets of how and why you do business. Um, then I just have here uh, our next is just kind of the our general um, custom marketing plan that we would use to help get you know someone's home sold. So um, I guess I don't really need. I don't think it's important for me to go through all of these individual items. But there are a couple of things that I just want to call to your attention. Again, not really knowing, you know, where everyone is in their career and or their knowledge base of different things. Um, but one of the things that I think uh, is important, and it's something that we believe in. If you don't believe in it, it's fine. But I do believe in it, and it is open houses. Um, we we do sell luxury. Um, mainly, we do you know everything along in the continuum, but we do focus a lot on the luxury end and um, you know some agents will say things like well it's a waste of time to do the open houses and you know it's fine if you want to believe that but I'm telling you that one of the things that open houses do is that it increases your ranking or visibility in um, online so with Zillow Zillow rewards you every time you make a change in your um, listing through MLS and so when it does that it increases the visibility or what I call the, you know, the online eyeballs to your listing um, by just having an open house. So we always set an expectation with our sellers that we wanna have an open house at least once a month unless there is some extenuating circumstance that, pre that prevents them from allowing us to do that. And uh, also we set the expectation that you know, we're gonna do everything we can to try to get as many people as we can through the door or over the threshold as I say 
But even if there's just a very limited number of people who actually come to the home for the open house, um, there is increased visibility online. And we know that a lot of people are starting their searches online. So that is also an intrinsic data point that you can share with them. And you can actually go into Zillow, like the week of your open house and like grab a screenshot or you can do like the, the dates like before and after and show how the visibility is higher by having had the open house. So um, let's see. I'm just looking here to see. Um, okay, so the other thing that I would say too is um, we all know about um, you know marketing listings to consumers, but I don't think that we can understate again how important it is to be well networked, both with agents, brokers, both within Keller Williams and within the region. It's important to have. Um, integrity and credibility and to be an agent that other agents want to work with because um, you can have conversations with other agents you know when you go to call a competitor um, but they're like friendly competitors because we all need each other you know they're going to pick up the phone and they're going to talk to you and you can talk to them about your listing share the attributes of the listing say hey do you have anyone that's looking have you had a chance to see this property and if they haven't talk to them about it and let them know because there's only so much that like words on a page and pictures can do. I mean, they do do a lot, but a lot of times um, we can get agents to show a property because of what we've been able to share with them by making phone calls to them. So I do think that's really important. Um, and right, Lizzie, don't you think so too? Do you do the same thing? I love listings. So, you know, I'm a new Burma, so I'm enjoying my grand my grandkids, but yeah. I'm from real estate and uh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I love your listings, ladies. So yeah. anytime I can help. <laughs> Well, that's what we say. And, and, and that's the other thing too. Well, so, and then the, so the other thing about open houses, sorry. Um, we do like to hold the houses open and we will do them really as frequently as our sellers will allow us. And like I said, we do request that they allow us to do it at least once a month, unless there's extenuating circumstances. And although we do uh, ask other agents to help us with open houses, we also really believe it's very important for the listing agent to hold that house open. Because what you'll start to see when you're in the home, first of all, you'll start to get you know, a better sense of the home, how the, you know, the home lives, maybe some attributes that you didn't pick up on before so that you can talk, you'd be more well-versed about it. But then also um, when you're doing the open houses, you start to see the people who are looking for houses. And guess what? You'll start to see if you're if you have multiple listings and you're holding different open houses. Next thing you know, one weekend you're at one house, the next weekend that you're at, they're at a different house, and then you can start. And not if they're working with an agent, you are not trying to um, take their business from their agent. But there is a way tastefully for you to establish rapport with a buyer, whether they're working with an agent or not, and help them to see the attributes of this home and to help sell the home. So if you're establishing rapport with them and they're working with another agent, you say, oh, you know, oh, Lizzie, it's so good to see you. Um, uh, you know, I, I mean, I saw you last week and how is the home search going? You know, have you been able to find anything? Can you give me feedback about this house? I mean, as you start to see people more frequently, they also, what, that you have to know, like, and trust people, right? So as they start to see you more, they are going to start to feel the same way about you with that rapport, as long as you're doing it tastefully and not really infringing on them, um, they're probably going to be more willing to share information with you. And that's information that you can share back with the seller. And then also, if they're working with an agent, you can say to them, you can follow up with their agent and say, hey, I saw, you know, Lisey was at, did you realize that Lisey was at two open houses of mine, one last weekend and one this weekend, or last weekend, we had three open houses and your client was at three of them. You know, and if they've got, you know, so there's a way to establish that rapport and to help get the house sold, even if, you know, again, if they're working with another agent, it's important to respect that, but there's a way to do it respectfully. Um, so there's a lot of agents who will say, you know, the listing agent is too busy, you know, the rainmaker is too busy. And I'm telling you what, Karen Trimble will be, if we're having open houses, Karen Trimble will be at those open houses. 
willingly because she understands the value of being there. So it's not just like, oh my gosh, I have to do an open house. It really is. There is a sales opportunity with those open houses and doing them and also being aware of the market, you know, and who's looking in a certain price point. Uh, okay, then here, let's see, just, you know, everything that you guys know about, you know, I'm hoping that you're using professional photography. If you're not, it's worth the investment. Um, we, you know, on the luxury end, we do um, videos, lifestyle videos, and also walkthrough videos, um, because it's really important at the price points that we have. Um, we do, we do brochures. I mean, not a lot of agents are doing that anymore, but we do custom printed brochures um, that a local printer does for us. And actually, I mean, I, you can do it either in command or you can do it in Canva. And I've got a template that I can just pull and drop um, photos in and, you know, grab copy from the MLS and pop it in there. And I've got the templates that I use and upload them to, you know, the printer and off they go. So usually I can get those within, you know, 24 hours. So we feel like it's a important thing also a point of differentiation. And you know what? We only print like 25. It's not like we print like posts of them, but we do print like 25 of them. And then again, depending on the type of listing it is, we'll also do what's called a lookbook, which is like a bound book. Uh, but again, depending on um, the listing that we're doing. And then um, also, you know, the digital marketing, we've talked a little bit about that, but we do, um, you know, Facebook campaigns and we do we also do some LinkedIn campaigns and targeting. So again, depending on the persona of the buyer that we have developed, um, we will, you know, kind of deploy an integrated marketing campaign against those folks. We also do, I use email marketing um, pretty regularly, both from uh, letting agents in the marketplace know that a new listing has come and then also to our sphere and database. And then I also use it if they're, we're doing open houses or if there's a price reduction or a price improvement, I do use um, those emails. So, and again, we use MailChimp, super easy, templated. We, you're paying for all this you know, high-end photography. You might as well get it out there to as many people as you can in various channels. So we do take advantage of that too. We also, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Jackie. This is Robin. What did you say? You use MailChimp? MailChimp. Oh, okay. So no, actually, um, Rob, this is, I think it's, um, MailChimp is actually, well, I'm not sure where it stands right now. It's supposed to be integrated with command. Uh, I don't use it out of command right now, but there is like a, I think the subscription is free up until a certain number of people in your database. And I'm just going to make that number up. I'll say it's like 250 or something. So, uh, Basically, you go into MailChimp and you uh, create your account, and then they have all different kinds of templates. And um, I'm happy to show anyone, like, I'm not going to say that everything that I do is just awesome sauce, but I mean, I'm happy to show people, like, how to do some of these things. I mean, and how I do it. And then you kind of, again, take your, you know, you take it and run with it how you would want to change it or make it different. So, um, yeah, I was just curious because yesterday, um, Lindsay Vronick, she mentioned, you know, go, sending out the postcards and that through command. Yep. And, and I, she mentioned, I didn't know it was MailChimp, but she mentioned, you know, another vendor that kind of takes it from command then and, and gets it out to everyone. So that's yep. why. Right. So within, so in command, uh, you know, if you, if you're using your contacts correctly, you know, and you've got them identified and you're using that in your pipeline, then, you know, you can, it integrates with MailChimp. So, okay. um, so I think I'm trying, you know, and I honestly haven't tried it through command. I just do it through MailChimp because that's kind of what we always have done, but it is something that I want to try. So if she's saying that it's working, then you can just, if you launch it through command, then you're basically being take. it's like they're using the MailChimp portal, but it's just available through command, kind of just like how the um, direct mailers are. Okay, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Okay, and then I always just, um, you know, give an example of uh, kind of, you know, all the types of things that we have going on to show them, you know, in, the marketplace, how we're active online and in all social media platforms. 
Um, I do think it's important to share with them too that, you know, we are very, um, you know, community minded, that it's not just about promoting our, you know, listings or things like that, that we really are active members of our community and we um, share all kinds of things that are happening you know, online, both within the community. So, you know, new restaurants that are being open or retail or sales or like the Heartland, you know, the, um, whatever the, whatever, Halloween or the downtown days in Heartland or the beer gardens or whatever it is. I mean, we, or if there's like notable things happening, you know, we are um, sharing that through our business page. And then obviously, you know, hopefully the goal is to become, you know, uh, a resource, <clears throat> excuse me, for people in the community. And it's not, we're not just barraging them all the time with our listings. And there's that. And then we also, um, so that was online. And then we also do some other kind of specialty stuff with, we are a member of the Business Journal's Home of the Day, where we pay kind of a monthly fee to be a part of that. Um, and uh, we also are depending on, you know, the type of listing that we have, we take out advertisements in Lakeshore Living and do custom email blasts and like the, those kinds of things. There's a lot of opportunities that are available to you. Um, you just have to kind of do some of the digging to see what, you know, when you want to pull in what tool and what platform or what channel and what message you want to say to be able, you know, for that to make sense. And then we have um, the Start Healthy magazine, which is one of those custom magazines that gets mailed to a list of um, 50 local businesses um, in Lake Country. And so it's got great articles about healthy living. And then I also have an opportunity to customize, you know, there's like a, a letter and then some, like, I think I have a, a, an ad that is about, you know, receiving a free home seller guide. And then we can also promote our listings. So that's like a, that's with Reminder Media. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that. They did the, um, oh my gosh, what is it? The, it's the home one. Start Healthy just was launched like a year ago. And we were kind of one of the first in on Start Healthy because no one else was really doing it. And I always liked like if every, you know, what, what's the name of that? It's, um, ugh, it's the, home. okay, I can't remember, but it is, it's basically about home decorating. And obviously like every agent and their brother that can be in there is in there. And so I'm like, well, what's, and again, this is kind of speaking to like kind of the persona of your buyer, like, you know, what type of buyer is, um, is in your sphere, you know, and in your farm and, you know, what's meaningful to them. So to me, when we look at a lot of the people that we are working with, you know, healthy living, um, you know, eating smart, you know, exercising, uh, those kind of, you know, hiking, traveling, that kind of stuff is kind of the, some of the topically what's in the Start Healthy magazine. So, you know, that's what I'm doing. So it's been kind of fun. I really like the articles too. Um, and it's reminder media. You can just sign up. It's like a subscription and you can pick your own list of people that you want to send to. Okay. Then also, uh, I just, again, talking about the value that we provide. Um, oh, you know, Milwaukee Cribs is uh, an outlet that, you know, will promote listings. You have to submit your listing for consideration and then they decide whether they're gonna promote it or not, but we always do that. Um, Lake Country Family Fun and some of the other local um, blogging community we are affiliated or partnered up with and we do both um, kind of editorial stuff as well as kind of some sponsorship things. Um, we are a member of the Keller Williams Luxury Network. We have to pay a fee for that, but we do do that. We are a Z Zillow Premier agent and um, have some opportunities with that as well. And then lastly here, I have just the agent to agent marketing. Uh, again, how important it is to always be talking to other agents, you know, both well, and I think it's reciprocal. I think it's really important to you know, answer the phone when other agents call you. And, you know, when you're calling other agents to make sure that your conversation is meaningful. Um, we, we're, we all need each other to be successful. And uh, it's important to have integrity and credibility and to be working against like kind of a win-win scenario uh, because those are the agents that you're going to want to do business with. Those are the agents where you're going to help sell each other's listings. And we all win when we sell homes, right? So, and then I just have, here's just a little bit of our approach. Um, you know, again, 
I don't need to maybe go through all of it. I don't, I'm not looking at the time, Julia. How am I doing on time? <laughs> um, but just basically, this is talking about how, you know, we're going to work with them, what they can expect from us in the way that we're going to work with them, and then kind of touching a little bit on the value that we bring, uh, that how, you know, we're going to be presenting all offers and that we're going to be expertly advising them on the terms and conditions and that we're going to be negotiating, you know, on their behalf. And that really when you put the home on the market, that's just when things get started. It's called, we call it a market launch. And that's just really stage one. And there's so much that goes into getting a house to closed and sold uh, that we talk a little bit about that and how we work through all of that and coordinate everything right up to closing. And that's it on my that presentation. I don't know if anyone has any questions about that. It's pretty short. I mean, and like I said, we do it more for conversation than we do to like kind of read every word on the page, just a little bit like I was just doing for you. I do think it's important to, I might be talking a little bit too fast because I tend to do that. I have to watch it a lot, but I do think it's important to be as conversational as possible, not to take things for granted. Um, I use the diamond example, you could use like a surgeon example, you know, when you're going in for shoulder surgery, you only have two shoulders, hopefully you only, if you ever have to have one operated on, it's once in your lifetime, and you never have to happen again. When the surgeon walks in the room, you don't want that surgeon, you want a confident surgeon, you want them to feel like they have command, but you also don't want to feel like that they're just going to brush you aside. You know, that um, bedside manner and the way that they treat you goes a long way in um, making you feel comfortable and trusting that they're going to do a good job. And it's the same thing. I mean, obviously, we're not saving lives, but with real estate, these are people's lives. It is important. I mean, it's not, we're not going and buying a new suit or a new dress or a new pair of shoes or a new pair of earrings. I mean, we are, we're buying and selling homes and people's lives are changing. And there are ending chapters and starting new chapters. And there's a lot of motion that goes with all of that. So um, it's, it's important. And, and I guess also saying that a little bit, I, I do think it's important that if you don't win a listing, obviously what I said earlier on is to always follow back up with that seller and congratulate them on the listing. Tell them that you're going to try to bring buyers and that you're going to share it with people so that they can get their home sold. But then also I think it's important you know, at the back end of it all, um, for them to understand that there is a lot that goes into it, you know, and that um, making a connection with an agent is probably, if you've got the credentials and the know-how, the most important decision, and well, price, probably they're going to have a conversation with you about price, but there's a way to talk through that as well, so that hopefully they're not making the only decision based on your price recommendation, but you know, you make connections with people. People choose to work with people because they know, like, and trust them. You know, you could be up, up against one of the biggest agents in the area and, you know, what are your unique qualities about what you do, what you bring to the table? And that could be the connection that would make them feel important, make them feel like that their business is important to you. So, like, if I were an individual agent, you know, and I was going up against, I don't know if Jay or any of Jay's team is on my call here, sorry, but... And they, they do a great job. So I'm not, I shouldn't have said a specific name, but I would, I would say, you know, um, I'm an individual agent, but I have a team of colleagues that I, that I work with um, that, you know, I call in as needed throughout the process. And, you know, your business is really important to me and I'm going to treat you with a white glove treatment. I'm going to, you know, you're going to be my number one. So, I mean, again, that's just a way to overcome an obstacle if it's there. Okay. That's that. So then, okay, did anyone else have any questions? Sorry, I interrupted myself. There was a, a comment in here asking, where do you recommend new agents start when it comes to marketing and lead generating beyond their sphere of influence? Oh, and lead generating beyond their sphere of influence. Well, I mean, I would say probably, uh, become as involved as you can and be a giver in your community. Um, you know, you have to be careful. It's like no like and trust, you know, it comes in that order. You can't expect people don't, aren't going to trust you. If you are involved in your community and this, the first time you get in there, you're already asking for business. 
It's not going to be perceived well. So I think it's important to, and whatever your interests are, I mean, there's so many things that you can do um, to be involved in, whether it's the Chamber of Commerce, business networking, women in business networking, real estate networking. Um, and like, what are your passions? You know, do you have children? Are you involved with the PTA or the PTO? I mean, do you like running? Do you like hiking? I mean, join those clubs and become a part of those clubs. And then just always be aware that, you know, there's opportunity lurking in all of those kind of unexpected places uh, if you are giving. So if you're participating and you're giving, um, I think then people start to trust you and then over time. And it does take time. I mean, I would say that is probably why there's such a high um, rate of abandonment in real estate, because it does take time to, to build, build that pipeline. I mean, I will tell you that, I mean, at this point in time with our team, you know, it's, we do, I think Charlie even said it, and I didn't even know what the number was, to be honest with you, that like close to 55% of our business comes from listings. We do have a lot of listings, but I will tell you that our um, win rate is, you know, very high because very rarely are we up against other agents because we've developed over time the reputation of and the credibility of being in the marketplace and, um, you know, getting homes sold. And so obviously those referrals are important from our other clients you know, our past clients. And then uh, the other thing is, and I'm, if you're involved in Ignite or anything else like that, I mean, you know, uh, affiliate partners or referral partners, you know, from anyone. I mean, Katie Thomas will ask for like her plumber, her, the guy who does her chimney. I mean, she, she, she'll be at, she'll be at Piggly Wiggly and someone will say something and she just will hand out her card. I mean, and, and Katie is like the nicest person. I mean, she's not like coming at you salesperson, but she's so friendly and nice. And she's just like, well, if you ever need, you know, and she just hands them their card. And literally, I can't even tell you how many people that she has, um, you know, gotten from those relationships, you know, both the relationships, the kind of the trade relationships that she has and or from just, you know, meeting people, you know, we are involved in um, the, the Pewaukee, like, uh, whatever, the Pewaukee, like the summer days, I forgot what the name of it is. So we volunteer in the booth and we're serving people food, you know, as a team, we are involved in the beer garden and doing that. We are involved with ride to the barns and are riding in those events. So there's all kinds of things that you can do. And again, I would just recommend that you find what your passion is. Cause when you're doing something that you're passionate about, it's easier to talk about, to make the segue into real estate. If you're doing something that feels super uncomfortable because someone told you that you needed to do it, and then you have to talk about real estate, it's like, hello, beep, beep, farce, like people can see it, they know it. So don't do that. Just pick two or three things that you're gonna focus on and just do those things. And I wish there was an easy button, but there isn't, but it does get easier. <laughs> and have thick skin, thick skin, it's really important. Okay, so is there any other, I don't have, for some reason I can't see the chat. I don't know why, but. There weren't any more questions, just a lot oh. of sweet comments to you. Well. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so then the next thing is, uh, okay, this is just another tool that we have that um, I, we, depending on, again, you know, the nature of the request for us to come in and to talk with the seller, um, we have what's created what's called like a home seller prep guide. And in this guide, um, we are just trying to share with them. Um, and you can either share with them. I mean, I would say that we would like to be able to set, send this in advance. It's a PDF to the seller in advance of the appointment and just say, hey, we're looking forward to meeting with you. Um, we wanna share this guide with you in preparation for our meeting to get you thinking about um, you know, how we're gonna work with you and help you get your home sold. So, and again, this is a guide that can be used in advance of a listing appointment or it's something you could even use um, to try to get listings. You know, so I know right now with command, you know, we have the landing pages that are there. I don't think you can, um, there's no way to like download a PDF from the landing pages yet. I think that's probably coming, but there's a way that the landing page can be a data collector 
So you are creating a landing page that says um, free home seller, how to create the most demand for your, your, your home guide. And then you're putting it out there um, and um, promoting it on Facebook and other things. And then when they're coming and linking it, and when they click on that link and come to that landing page, they can get a little bit more of a tease of information and then they have to fill in their information. It's called a data collector and then hit submit. And then you would get a notification of that email and then you can share the PDF with them. So that's a kind of a workaround for command right now. Right now we're mainly using this, like I use this, um, like if we have an advertisement where I'm saying, get your free um, like home seller guide, if they would call us or reference that, then I would send them something like this. And if I'm running a Facebook campaign, campaign I would send them something like this. But we also use this in our um, listing presentations. So then here is another example of, you know, it's just a template that I created. And again, you know, you have all that beautiful photography for the listings that you're selling. And uh, I just leverage it as much as possible. So this is, you know, a photo from one of our listings from, I don't even know, probably two years ago now, but it was such a pretty house, such a great photo. We had it staged. So I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna use that one. So I do that. Um, and then we just talk a little bit about our four part plan, you know, that, you know, selling a home is more than the MLS data, um, your square footage, the number of rooms, you know, how many, you know, how many stalls in the garage, is there a finished basement, is there a first floor master, you know, that we focus on selling a lifestyle. Um, beyond that, uh, we talk about the, in, we really believe in staging. Um, we do stage a lot of our properties. Again, we do have a lot of luxury properties, so um, staging them is important and we do see that it makes a difference. Uh, so uh, whether we are going to have a, a stager come in and stage the home or we're going to talk to the seller about the importance of staging. Um, I'm actually a certified um, stager and actually I'm trying to get the lady who certified me in Ohio to come to Wisconsin. She's not certified there yet. I'm sure there's other people that could do it, but I really liked her. So um, I have a certification that is like certified property stager. So I'm not a stager, but I can make recommendations. I don't do the work, but I can tell them when I walk the property, you know, putting post-it notes everywhere, like, okay, need to declutter this, get rid of this, um, pack this up, you know, and talk to them about, you know, how we're selling the asset and not necessarily the furniture and that we really want to depersonalize and declutter um, to, so that people can see the asset. Talk a Kathy, little bit about, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, how did you get your certification? So Was I have, yeah, so you know what? I just did some, I was going to pull this up real quick. I did some digging. Let me see if I can get you, if I open up one of my, sorry, I have so many different emails, but I was just going to pull it up because I can't remember. So there was a woman in um, Ohio that she's actually from Canada. So it's the mm -hmm. Pro Professional Property Stager Learning Institute. And so she is certified to whatever, she's whatever, licensed, I don't know what the word is, to certify um, to become a professional property stager, which is a designation within um, the National Association of Realtors. So, um, you know, you have, it's like all those little designations that we have, you know, behind our names, like master negotiator, you know, those kinds of things. So she has a curriculum that she created and had it approved. And now um, she can run these classes. And at the end of it all, you take the classes and you pass the test and you can become a certified stager. So, um, I did it last year, I think it was last, a year ago, this past spring. Um, so I talked to her about becoming certified in Wisconsin because I would love to bring them to Keller Williams and be mm -hmm. able to do anyone from the Market Center. So, you know, that was Robin, right? Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm interested in that and, and the time that it took you to do that, I, that would be something that I'd be very interested in. Yeah, so I, you know what, I'm glad you said that. So I'll follow up with her because I had, I had put it, you know, out there for her and she was actually going to look into it. And then I, I honestly just haven't followed up with her with COVID and everything. <laughs> I was like, so I'm not really sure what she would be doing right now, but at least we can put it on our radar and see if she can get the certification to be able to certify us. In okay, Wisconsin great. Or you. Thank you. Yeah, sure, of course. Um, then we talk a little bit about, you know, our pricing strategy and then, you know, hiring the right team. So um, again, 
kind of some of the things I'm not going to go through this, this verbatim, but just this is just the guide that we provide for them. And, you know, we are really trying to work in concert in collaboration with the seller to help glean and pull out information from them that makes their home special or unique side of the fact that it's a four bedroom first floor master two car garage in Heartland. So, um, and really the best person to help answer those questions are the people who have, who have been living there. So we ask them questions like, you know, which rooms do you spend the most time in? You know, what is the fa your favorite part of your community? What is your favorite space in your home or your, your favorite memory that was created in what space in your home? You know, going back to like when you first bought this home or built this home, you know, what was it about this home that it attracted you to it? Um, and then is there something special that you'd like to share with the next owner? I mean, I know a lot of people will do like when buyers are writing offers in competitive um, situations, the buyer sometimes will write an offer. I mean, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be doing the reverse. You know, why aren't we telling buyers that are coming into this home why the seller or what the, the favorite things are about that home from the seller's perspective, you know, or when they first moved in, you know? So I think that that's, again, just thinking about how can you differentiate? How can you make this home special? And, you know, everything, all these answers that are then are gonna kind of culminate into creating a lifestyle about that home. And it's going to attract you know, the persona, the type of buyer who's looking for that home. You know, if they're looking for, let's just say, for example, um, like a two-story great room and a finished basement, is that because they're a growing family or they're a new family and they're, whatever, have their second or third child on the way and they want to have a lot of space to be able to, um, you know, host family gatherings there or have their friends come over, you know, those kinds of things. So I think it's important to take kind of the feature, like what are the features, and then think about what the benefit or what is the lifestyle that that feature provides potentially for a buyer who would be looking for a home of this type. Um, here we're just talking about the staging to sell, you know, just how we need to depersonalize and declutter. Um, we want this buyers to, you know, we want it to feel like it would represent their lifestyle without being too personal. We want them to feel like that they could envision themselves living in this home. Um, the way that this is all written to just FYI, this is like helping to build the rationale for you when you have to say the hard stuff to them. Like, okay, you're getting ready to move. I mean, we're going to put your house on the market and we want to sell it, right? So let's get moving. Let's start packing up some of this stuff. And whether you're gonna get a storage garage or find a place to pack it up and put it, um, we need to recommend that they do these things. And I think one of the things that, you, again, this is where the confidence and the graceful authority comes across. I mean, you don't wanna offend the seller, but there is a way for you to say, listen, I'm the expert, you're hiring me to sell your home. And based on my expertise, and my experience and what buyers are looking for in the marketplace, if you want to get the most value or price for your home, these are the things that I'm going to recommend that you do. If you need me to prioritize those, because I'm going to give you a list of 10 things and you're going to freak out and act overwhelmed, then I'm going to give you, these are the three things that you must do. These are the three things that um, I would like you to do. These are the other additional four things that if you did all of these things would maximize your price. So there's a way, again, I think it's really important to read the room, read your seller. I mean, a lot of times, you know, they're holding it all together. First of all, they're emotional. You don't, you know, why are they selling their home? This, they're overwhelmed with the task of getting it ready to bring it to market. And now you just like dump a list of things that they're supposed to do. And, you know, you want to be a friend, not a foe. So if you're perceiving that there's no way that they're going to be able to do all of that, prioritize it. If you're perceiving that they're going to need help, offer services. Say, you know, if, this, if you think this is too much and you don't have like family or friends that can help you with this, you know, we have a list of services and companies that specialize in this that can come in and help you do this. So read the room and, but you do have to kind of, you do have to make the professional recommendation. So, and just make decisions, you know, on the fly as to how to adjust as you're 
watching your seller crumble in front of you. <laughs> okay, then the pricing strategy. I mean, just we talked a little bit about this. Um, this is kind of the high level. This is not the pricing recommendation, but we're just talking to them about, you know, what our strategy is about pricing, you know, that you want to price in the market, not above the market, and uh, that you want to also talk about, you know, the comparable homes. And we always say things like, you know, given the attribute, when you're making a price and recommendation, usually it's a range. And we're saying, you know, given the comparables in the marketplace, you know, this is what, when people are coming to look at your home, they're also looking at other homes in this price range. So knowing their competition, sharing those listings with them so they can see by photos, you know, what those other listings are. And, you know, sometimes they're, well, most of the times they're thinking that their house is the best, right? That everyone's house is, well, that house has this and they have got a quirky little garage and yeah, yeah, but la la la. I mean, just taking the time to even walk through some of the comparables with them, with the photos and just, and if you've been in the, if you've been in the homes, and again, knowing the inventory, when you have opportunity to be in the homes, you should be in the homes, you know, letting them know, listen, I've been in this home. Your house is heads and shoulders above that home in these three ways. That home is better in these three ways. I've been in that. I've been in your home. I've been in that home. And, you know, this is why we're making the recommendation. So when you can speak from authority, firsthand authority, other than just what is showing up in the MLS, it's going to um, bode well for you and for them, hopefully. Um, always, you know, we're setting the expectation about, you know, real estate is a supply and demand business. And sometimes, you know, demand is high and sometimes it's not. Right now, you know, it's demand is super high. So that's a good thing. But just preparing them for, you know, how we're going to potentially be taking a price reduction or doing things to change or shift based on what I would call feedback. So we always take the outliers out, you know, we get the feedback from showing time, take the outliers out. But when you start to see a trend in feedback, you know, you want to share that with the sellers. Then we just talk about, you know, hiring the right team. These just kind of talk to like kind of what our strengths are. And then we get to the very end when we just have some questions, you know, kind of what are their motivations, you know, what their experiences, um, how do they want to be communicated with, you know, what kind of updates, you know, we usually do regular updates um, and, but we'll cater it to their needs if it's something that they absolutely have to have. Um, we usually provide feedback, but again, do they absolutely need to have it right away? That's usually what we do, but some are more, you know, sensitive than others. Do they want to get it as a text? Do they want it in an email? Those kinds of things. Um, and then talking to them about their concerns, you know, tell us what you're concerned about. Like, again, this is kind of being empathetic sharing with them, letting them know that you're a part of the team and that you'll be sensitive to what their needs and desires are. And then finally, you know, how are they going to decide um, who to list with? So that's that. And okay, I'm like way over, Julia. You're doing you such a good job, though. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, it's all the... Okay, so then there's that. Okay, so that was that. And you know, I'm not going to spend much time on the rest. I mean, the, I just have a couple of other things is just um, we use like, again, I'm, I'm a marketing person. So I think, you know, graphics and branding is really important. So, you know, when you're showing up to this appointment, you know, having everything all nicely done, doesn't have to be expensive, but looking professional, you know, you know, can you just take down a list of home improvements and write it down? Or can you give them a sheet? Now this, what I do is I give them the sheet and then they kind of fill it out in handwriting. And then I take that sheet and I add in, in when I type it out. And then this is what we put, you know, in the MLS and then also at the home so that people can see. So, you know, again, this is like nothing. This like, I put, well, like, I know Julia, you're the uh, command. Are you like the Canva girl now? Yeah. Yeah. So this is, I can tell. I'm like, so Julia's in Canva. No, <laughs> this is like, I'm the Canva girl, like the design tool for non-designers. So I just- And there's a lot you can do for free. You don't need to- And it's so easy. Yeah. Well, now, like for me, just recently in the past six months, they, um, 
now linked to our Dropbox. So I used to have to upload all the photos. And now if you go down like beyond folders and it says more, you can link to like Google images, you can link to your Dropbox. So when we get our photos from our photographer, I immediately bring it over to my drop, our Dropbox. And um, then when I'm working in Canva, I literally just go down, I type it in and it pulls that folder and then I can just slide over any photos I want. It has been a miracle. It's awesome. So I love Canva. I mean, I'm sure command is getting there, but I do love Canva. Uh, and then the other, the only other thing I had was just like, you know, kind of our, our like intake sheet. So the questions that we ask, you know, the particulars about the home while we're there, because otherwise some, you know, we can either have the seller fill this out or the agent will fill this out. It kind of just depends. Um, and then I'll just wrap up with this just to tell you the, the things that I typically have in our inexpo, inexpensive labeled folders um, that are ready to grab and go. Um, I have our overview. I have that home seller prep guide. Even if we've sent it in advance, I also include it there. Um, I have our home improvement list here. I have a preferred vendor list to share with them. I have the home details checklist. I, of course, have business cards of our agents. I have um, physical examples. So, you know, in the presentation, I have like just screenshots of stuff, but I'll have like physical examples of our direct mailers, the Start Healthy, um, the brochures um, that we use so that they can physically feel and touch those things and know the quality that we're talking. Um, I also have what I term like a link sheet because not everything, I can't leave everything with them, but I can have a link sheet to things that we have. So I will have a link sheet that links to like a landing page of a property. So our landing, so it'll show them what their landing, you know, this is what your landing page is going to look like. It'll have, you know, all the information, the photos, and then also the tool, the video, and then a data collector that I will use to promote the listing. Um, I'll have a link to some of like, just lifestyle videos that I think are important that may be beyond just that one that's on that page, just to show them the types of videos that we would create. And then I will have a link to the business journal home of the day. And then um, I also have, I didn't have this, I don't know if you guys can see this, but you know, Charlie does those, um, the data, you know, every week or whatever, once a month, the MLS stuff or the Keller Williams stuff. We created something in COVID called How's the Market? And so this is where we pull data specifically to Waukesha County and Lake Country that we use. Again, this is a Canva template that I just have. And I have our, it's like four different placeholders and we, we pop in there and just drop in the new numbers and bam, done. So we include that too. So that's that. That's all I got. Awesome. Does anyone have any more questions? Okay, well. Awesome. Well, okay. thank you so much for coming on, Kathy. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. And if anyone has, I know it's a bunch of people up because I went way over. If anyone has any questions, I mean, or wants any, I mean, I'm always happy to help people, even to get people started or to show them what, how I do it. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lifelong learner and uh, I, I love to learn. And uh, I, a lot of times, just hunt and peck around until I figure things out. So, and I try to, I try to watch as many webinars and seminars and learn from in as many people as I possibly can, <laughs> even at over 50. Yeah. So. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good <laughs> okay. to see you. Thank you. Okay. Bye guys. See ya. Bye.